Oh yeah, it is. What was it? Sunday was episode 49, wasn't it? So it is episode 50. I have to think of the line now. So this is, so it is Ebby Said, this is Behind the Build, and this is episode 50. Where is he? Hey, he's just not in again. Why? Don't know. Has he told you? It just goes to voicemail. No, I tell you nothing. I tried to phone him this morning. Couldn't get no signal. No signal like here. Yeah. So he must must be away. Yeah. Yeah. Dalton. Yeah. Yeah. International Dalton. I don't know what I'm going to do here by this YouTube because we're meant to be doing Wednesday's episode. So I don't know how we're going to get that out now. Is, is Hollywood there as well? Hollywood's A1 as well. He's gone. Mate, right. within, the, within the trenches here, you know. I'm going to gonna have to think of something here because I've got to do film. I'm trying to film now. Niles with me now to film. And I've got to go and get yeah. a few other bits done today. So, mate, you don't even know I'm going to get Wednesday done here. Yeah. I might just have to get Sunday. Time to get creative then, isn't it? Yeah, so, yeah, there we go. There's me and KTM speaking now on the phone, trying to work out what we're going to do. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, but this is episode... What episode are we on, Keelan? 50? Was it 49? 50. 50? Is it? Oh, you know what? I'm is it 50? 50. Oh, can now we're doing this on episode 50. It's not good, this, is it? It's a nightmare, isn't it? <laughs> We're stitched up here. So... I'm at Preferred Joining Me and as you've just seen there then, again, we're going to try and pick an episode up here together now. Niles with me so he's going to do a little bit, but we haven't planned it. It is episode 50 so this should really be one of the best episodes because it is a bit of a milestone for us. But we'll see how we get on. Please bear with me, I'm going to try my best this week and see what we can get done. But today we're in Preferred so go and see what we're doing. So I've just been going through the furniture then, the last few bits. So Danny and Michael pulled me when I come in then and just asked about a few things, the queries and basically, and because the furniture that we build for this customer, there's loads of different nuances to it and it's because it's been done so many times over the years, it's slightly different each time. So we're just trying to do it in a way whereby it's a bit, you know, user friendly for the lads who are fitting on site and it's universal as well. So Danny's just been showing me then. So these are the tops for the desks. So one edge, he's bull nosed one side and bull nosed this side. And then on the other edge, it's just literally a square finish cut. So that gives the option then. So for instance, if we've got a wardrobe here, the square edge will go tight to it. And this edge could be an overhang or both on show. So the desk could be seen, or if this wall is stepped back a bit, you can just catch the back end of a nice edge. And if it's the opposite way, the means will just spin it round and then do it that way. I've just been going through the upstand as well. So there's no stand that's going to be going all the way round to finish it off nice and we've been trying to decide whether or not to bullnose it uh, just put the router on one edge or leave it square edge so we've decided to leave it square edged all the way round because we think it gives it a nice cleaner finish but then when it comes to the bullnose end here is they're going to put it through the bandsaw and put a nice curved finish down so that'll finish right down flush on the front so when it's fitted and you'll see it, you'll have a nice clean cut flowing back in and then down all the way around and the same this side so they both flow nice and in rather than putting all the edge in because if you nose that edge off there when it comes here to join up you would always get like a little bit of a messy finish into the edge there so by having a nice square finish going in we think it'll look a little bit better and obviously when the lads are on site if they just give it a little rub down I know the lads will be watching this as well so when they do come to fit it this is like a bit of a demonstration for them of what we've done they'll, they'll know what to do so yeah a little bit of a take the edge off a little bit there if they wanted to or just keep it nice and clean and crisp because i think once it's been painted in it looks much better because as i say if you did bull nose all the way around you'd have a bad finish against the wall and then if you did do this getting it into there it's just neat it in it's not as nice you can mitre it in but the finish wouldn't be as good we've decided to put the cut out for the desk there as well and obviously the shelves are all going to go here so as i say that's universal like you need to flip it whatever way is needed that's what i was speaking about before where we said we're going to curve it down into the side danny's just using his trusty tool to measure the circle and put a circle edge on to get the shape a little bit of science to it there Done. Okay. So what do we do there now? Sand it as well. Ah, yeah. oh, lovely that. So that's it. So we're gonna do in all of them. How many do you need to do? Four. 
40. So that'll be the finish basically coming in on each one and then just be square edged into that all the way round same again there so there is all the wardrobe side as well for project 849 and again there the shelves they're, the they're, the, they're the shelves then i think they're the shelves going in or the tops and bottoms going in over there in packs as well to show you now it's all being wrapped up to go out as well so all of these wrapped up in the wraps are the shelves for all the wardrobes again all put together so you know one is for each room or one is for each wardrobe one edge is all ball nose ready to slide in uh, so yeah nicely packed up ready to roll just dust everywhere off the mdf because anyone who knows who cuts it they should just not leave it in and danny's done very well at keeping on top of keeping the dust down and cleaning up as soon as he's done any cuts we can just see a little bit more residue there it's just stuck to it just gets everywhere it's all over me already so all of this is going to get used isn't it oh mm -hmm. yeah the only off cut you'll have is one of these wide ones because they wanted a 12 inch rail yeah but again it's built in the place yeah but yeah. then all the small doors it's coming out of this yeah so this timber here is the rough hardwood sapili timber that's come in you can see rough cut these are going to be four two bifold doors on a bar in liverpool that'll be three three doors yeah that's what we got the big set then three doors yeah next to that is this whopping door four foot wide so oh, that's the main entrance door going into the restaurant bar and then that's a set of bifolds which will open and close but mainly people just be going in and out of there yeah so they'll kept closer yeah and then that's the other two sets isn't it yeah so these will have a shelf going in there yeah set at a meter and 70. yeah so all the stools and you sit there and they will slide out that way and they will slide out that way yeah so got they, they look into the courtyard so just pick that up there you don't feel the weight just that's what <laughs> 300 mil the weight of that alone there is heavy isn't it you can hear how dense it is so yeah. them there like yeah there we are they, they vary yeah. so then when he's fitting it then you have to fit each door individually take them all one by one so you will fit it up make it all up here won't we It'll probably go out, put together, but unglazed. So we're just setting up now. Little sample block. You're going to push for the spindle, aren't you? I am indeed. So as always, they set it first with a little piece of rough wood. Get the dimensions right. And then push through the proper one. So is that calibrated then? If you tear, if you... Well, do you follow that? Do you actually follow that or you don't know? No, we don't follow that no more. We just know left is rough and right is down. Got me 42. Now we need 15. I want 13. So they're double rebates because they've got glass in the bottom. So now, now this one here is that big one. I only put the rebate in one side to take so the out. glass. So yeah, so on there then, that's them two uprights then, isn't it? Yeah, I've just done them two now. So then that there where we're saying it's glass, no longer glass now then, that's what you're saying, you're going back out today? No, no, it is, it's just reduced. Oh, okay. That's why I took that size out. So I'll out. put it in later. Oh yeah, so he's got to go back out today and I was just had a call where the bottom glass is going in there the wall below is actually going higher now so my well if it's going to sit on the floor now they're going to put a little okay cut, you may as well call it a foot shelf <laughs> yeah so your feet will go on there instead of kicking the glass basically that's yeah do you think makes so. sense so they'll all be get whipped up today tomorrow won't they yeah we want to tap the frames up by tomorrow so i can make the doors yeah so so my little back sock is, is now gone we used to have the van with the logo now it's the container but another little thing for you there as well 
we, as Chris explained on the last video, where we've got people in now across the whole company doing our marketing side of things, they're going to look after all the websites and stuff like that and the branding. They looked at Preferred and Preferred's logo used to be like an older one. Then when me and Chris come in, we done like a bit of a temporary one for now, which was the disc you see on the wall, you've seen on the van, you've seen on the lads' tops. The design team now we've got in place have sort not ripped it apart, but they've said going forward if you want the brand to grow, we advise using a different one. So they've come up with a couple of different designs, one that me and Chris have now picked and we're going to run with. And it's a little bit more modern than the disc. Um, it's a bit hard for me and Chris to like come to terms because sometimes it is hard to make change, especially when we put a sign up and we put the stuff on the van and the t-shirts. But in the long scheme of things and you know with the plans that we've got for the company, it's the right decision. So Nas has been saying to me, go to the logo on this. So the new logo will probably go on here as well as all the new signs and we come around to doing it. But it's not done yet. So as I say, good little update in Prefer today. Them bifold doors that you see getting made. I want to try and show all of that getting done because they're going to be a good job. We posted a reel on Instagram a couple of months back now and it got one of the highest views of a bifold door in the factory and it had 200 and something thousand views, which is a lot for the Prefer page. So we're open. The content shown on this getting them made will be decent so yeah so as i say got a long week ahead now i've got to try and come up with some stuff as i go now's with me for the next couple of days as and when he just meets me at certain jobs or catches up with me so we can try and film so i'm going to try and film as much as i can and fit it into me week august are the worst week uh, the month of the year i think because people are on holiday people are away chris is away with the family and we got Richard away from this factory and when people are away it's hard and even in across all our other companies doing with finance with the property solicitors Evans offs on holiday with the family so yeah so as I say please bear with me I'll try my best this episode to do what we can and put it together and give us something for Sunday to watch because we did miss out on the Wednesday episode so today I'm just in Kenny Fields and just getting to Adelaide Road now coming around the one-way system to go and see how we're getting on there today, me Christian. Because uh, I'm on the way here, I spoke to him and we're cracking on nice, the lads are getting on with the kitchen stuff and the painters are moving along nicely as well. Alex, our plumber, should be back to get the second fix kitchen bits done as well because all the appliances have landed. So as soon as I pull up, we'll go in and have a look how we're getting on. So we're now on Adelaide today. So I'll just come, going to meet Christian, see how we're getting on. The lads are cracking on nice and sad because I know the kitchen's been getting done all last week and they're finishing off this week. Appliance have landed first thing this morning, which is good. Alex's van's here, so he's getting on with the second fix of the kitchen as well as Ross and Ray, Dad and Lad. And Christine's lads are just doing the front step, so let's have a look. In the comments, <laughs> last week I think it was, so I'm, so I'm lit, who is Christine? So I keep saying I'm going to go and see Christian. Christian this is yeah. Christian. So Christian's <laughs> from Hung Hungary, named Chris, full name Christian. So Christian, no, not Christine. Yeah. So when I say I'm going to go and see Christian, that's what I'm going to say, aren't yeah. I? All the friends and all the boss, just Chris. Yeah. And everyone else, Christian. I call you all Christian. Yeah, original name Christian, but everyone else just call me Chris. What's your other Christian or Chris, Chris? Yeah, everyone just call me Chris, yeah. So Chris. Yeah. But Chris gets mixed up with Chris Shaw, so sometimes it's hard. <laughs> so yeah, the lads are just doing a step, as explained, because we changed the flight height of the floors. We have to remodel the step as well. It's the right height now, then, isn't it? So you're going to yes. step up in twice? Yes, twice. So you're going to raise this a little bit then? Yeah, so need to raise a level, bit. Is it? Yeah, need to raise a bit, but uh, we want to go over with the membrane, because we can't see about it's horse, everywhere just horse at the minute. Yeah. So we want to stop. Stop any penetrations, make sure the water not get in. Yeah, because that's what we said last week as well. So when I said I could see daylight, that's where it's coming from here. Yeah? So when it rains, the water runs down straight into the straight basement. Straight into the basement. Because so, that gap is there, that's the way the old uh, oh, coal chute used yeah. to be. So you can imagine back in the day when they dropped the coal into it there, that's where it used to be and it'd fall into the basement. So they used it on the fires. Uh, so yeah, so this will be ready today, won't it? Yeah, we fill it up today. Uh, you ordered the tiles? Ordered yeah? the tiles, same again, coming Friday. I spoke with the tiler, Paul. Yeah. And he think he's coming Monday for the patch back and the front steps. Sound. So then uh, when you're doing all that, concrete? Probably. So you've backfilled now, haven't you? Backfilled. So all outside, it. when you see me and Christian speaking, we've backfilled and I would all hardcore. And did you membrane it as well? Membrane it, we screened it. Sound. So then and that's going to be ready now for the pour. You're going to be ready. You're going to pour that on, yeah? 
Yeah, we just pure it. Yeah. yeah, we just get it co- concrete there. And then make a little channel to go out for the rainwater. Uh, I got a, I got a, yeah, and I got a vacuum, vacuum drill. Yeah. And we make about three holes on it. Sound for the water. For the water, run Good. up the water. So all the, you've painted all the bays now, haven't you? Yeah, afterward, we're gonna be paint afterward. Silicone to do. Yeah, silicone to do. Yeah, the bead, yeah, the bead on the front is, is on. And you got up there to do, haven't you? Uh, I ordered the two inch bead, but on the top it's not straight. So as soon as you put in the two inch bead, you can see oh, about yeah. not angle. What are you gonna so do? I had to need four inch bead. And then cut and it? Cut it, looks like it's straight. Yeah, it's only existing sandstone bays at the top. Is that a big crack or yeah. gap from where the windows were? Well, obviously we didn't update the windows, you kept the existing ones on because they were sound. We we're, were swapping them. And there's a gap up there, and that's what Christian's on about getting a piece of trim just yeah. to seal it off. Yeah, only there's two windows left. It's all others is done. Visually, it would have been better there, but I don't know what you're saying practically. I need to do there, Chris. Sorry. Oh, yeah. bad. No, you need to do next time. Mm. Move that window that way. That window needs to go there more, so. More. So I'm just showing Christian there. So on this window now where the sink screen fitted. It would be nice if the sink was fitted directly in line with the window and it's not. It's going to have to come over a bit more because the lads are saying all the fixing means underneath there. It's just not going to have enough support to get it in. It's too much of a cut out. And I know what's gone wrong. The window's been built far too far that way. It needs to come this way. We build this extension from scratch so we can put it wherever we want. So we need to just move it over. So as I say, we've got another couple of jobs to do. So we're just going to shift it that way. So it's outside, done. Oh. Yes, Alex. Have you done this as well? Yes, yeah, Alex. Yeah, we're just discussing that window again from in outside now for the next jobs that we do because as I say we've got a couple more coming up now that once the back end of all these are done we're going to start them the one over the road as well that needs starting which is getting used as our storage facility at the moment keep saying to Christian rip it out even though we ripped green bank out without me asking to we started to take off all the... won't rip that one up because it's stored as little compounds yeah, but we started to take, save it all the handles now, all the sockets, USB sockets. Yeah. So we started to take, take, them, off. take them off. So we're getting ready to rip out. We're ready to rip out now soon. Yeah. So yeah, window moved over there, isn't it? He's made up. Look at him. Christian has made up here to show me something. It's like I'm wrapping a present at Christmas. <laughs> Just pull back the vis screen like it was red carpet. What are you showing me? Uh, yeah, we finished. <laughs> we finished the, the printing already. So all that is missing now. Just a back fence. Chris Shaw was saying to me, is there any way we can do an Empress sign on the next one? Yes, yes, I just need to create something from... In the print? Yeah, from the mood. I can make yeah. it that. Some, something like a stamp. Stamp. So on here now, all you got to do is uh, seal it up. Seal it up. Just need yeah. about two day dry now. About two days dry. Let's have a proper look then. So what have you done there? Have you mixed it up then with the dye? Yeah. Uh, basically, sh- sharp sand, oh, yeah. uh, reverse sand we call, sharp sand, reverse sand, re- reverse sand, mm-hmm. black dye, and cement. But we need to make sure about we calling for 2B3 or 3B2. So, three parts sand, two parts cement. Yeah, looks good. So, we're outside now. You can see, renders all done, caps are on, the concrete's done, all the waste pipes are on. Just the outside lights to go on, isn't it? Camera. Camera, outside lights. Seal this, put the fence on. So you can see the transformation now compared to what that wall was like. And, you know, it's not bang on straight, but it's much better than what it was. Sure was. And you would think it was a brand new wall, which it looks like a brand new wall. Yeah, so just going through a few bits with Christie in there. Horrible, these alleyways, when, you, when you're in them. But, like, this is our mess, which will clear, but the rest of it there, like, behind the aisle. It's something out of, like, a third world country. Just talking about bits of the gutter there, it's overhanging, because we couldn't finish that side of the roof because the scaffold was so scaffold tight. Was Scaffold's come down, we finished it, we just need to cut that cutter back now. Um, there's an extractor fan to be cut out here. Plastic needs cleaning back where it's been rendered. All the bricks have been painted in nice. So yeah, it's coming on good. You wanna paint that black as well, are you? Yes. Yeah. So you can see like what we try and do com- on ours compared to anyone else. We'll try and make sure it's spot on the best we can and looks decent. And again, no maintenance, we want it to be protected it's like putting them a winter coat on a property when you render it like this just seals it up everywhere um hides all the inconsistencies that you see in the different change in the wind the heights the brick alterations that we have to make just puts a nice big clean finish over it much better so all the appliances have landed as well two ovens tumble dryer washing machine i can even unwrap that i said don't unwrap it 
I do hope. Yeah. Have you won a fifty team? So I do say today, yeah. Yeah. So it's going to say today today. So one thing that always happens on nearly every single job is this hob because it's ceramic. It gets damaged, man. It's damaged, cracked. So we always like. Yeah, if it's going to get fitted, they then sand will protect it. Yeah, protect away. it. Another one is the sink, because the sinks are black, they get used by everyone still, because the job's still not fully finished and you can never clean the stuff off. So, Alex, Christian, I'm going to make sure this time that it gets protected and, and it's not it's able to use it, because you just can't clean it off, because it's like a black material, it's the Frankie sinks. You just collect the yeah, dirt and you can't get it off, can you? Yeah, composite hard ones, to, yeah. Hard to, hard to grub it up. Yeah, uh, you'll see as well the tumble dryer washing machines or black I always go for black when it's on show on project Albert because it was in the cupboard got them in white anything that's in the cupboard out the way we got them in white but on here black because it's to master black kitchen there was actually a mistake made on woodlands woodlands because it was white a white yes. one come and should have been black white. but it was too late because they had to get upstairs you know it was too late you'll see that in next or next week or two as well that's been fixed alex Already, yeah. that bird screws. Okay. Um, that's the need to fix. Ross. <laughs> yeah, maybe he haven't watched the Sunday episode. Right, we we'll do that. So, what's your fixing life on that day into the brick there, aren't you? Yeah, we haven't put very long screws in. No. Do you think you could get it more tight then? We can do, yeah. I think so. Just pass screwdriver us, please. Only because look got that all the way up there, see? He's only, he hadn't really, he hadn't really hit them long ago, so we didn't over time, if you know what I mean. They're just spinning them. Need a PZ3 as well. Oh, is it there if you want it? No, it's just there. Is that a PZ3? Or a better, better head than that? Already ready for boarding. Is it? Uh, being wired up about Kevin. We're just yeah. waiting to finish off. Yeah, so down here, we haven't been down here for ages, have we? Uh, from the, yeah. So, so down here is nearly done. It's a bit of a mess, to be honest, because the lads have just been working away, you know, it's been cleaning up because it's out of, out of sight, out of mind. But Tom's done all his bits, cylinder's been fitted, you can see, so it's a horizontal cylinder, cylinder. basically because of the height. Couldn't get the other one in. They're a little bit more expensive than the vertical ones. But the better, Christian made a concrete bed for it to sit on. You'd see, you want to take that away then? Yes, we take it over the way, yeah. the timbers. So that's, a, as I say, the 300 litre tank, is it? 300 litre tank? Yeah, 300. Yeah, 300 litre tank, unvented cylinder, nice boxy boiler that we always put in. Uh, and as I say, I like doing it this way round because it's like a little mini plant room for the lads. They come down here, they can work, it's dead accessible. If you have any issues in the future or we need to do boiler services or electrical tests, you just come down here and you're out the way, you're not disturbing no tenants. Kev's done all his electrical bits there, he's obviously still got a bit more outstanding to do. Kev, our data lad, he'll come in and put all the TV boosters and cameras and all stuff that'll all get mounted here as well. And then that's it really down here. It's getting boarded off though, isn't it? Fireboard. Fireboard that. Fireboard the ceiling, you're going to fireboard that? Yes, fireboard that also. So you're going to brick it or fireboard? Fireboard it because it is uh, 400. So, um, so where the void is there behind, you can see we put a few stanchions in as well just to keep the floor solid because it is a suspended floor and that bit is tiled, that section. We want to have the least bounce as possible so the lads have just done that for extra precaution. You probably wouldn't need it but we've just done it anyway. You see all the waste pipes that have gone through and out, a bit of ventilation which is done already for this basement so it will take the air out. And then there's our little coal chute, you can see the daylight coming through. So that's going to get sealed up, stop yeah. the water from coming in. So yeah, it's looking all right. Yeah. And then we'll just put some lights down here, emergency lights. Yeah, this is it. It was coming over, I think. Yeah, so we took them off. They helps over the road. Sensor one and emergencies. Just looking at the colours, this doesn't look right. It looks too yellow. Yeah, this is still the uh, base coat, yeah. the mist coat, the coloured mist coat. So hopefully it's all right. But yeah, as I can see, and you can see, the painting is moving along nice. So he's done all prep now, hasn't he, really? Yeah, it's all up. sand. All gets is all done, yeah? Yes. No big gaps this time, no? No big gaps this time. You need to remember them when Master Tommy comes in. Yeah, so the windows still. Yeah. Yeah, so the bathrooms are all done now. Alex, as I say, he's just done the kitchen bits now. All enclosures are on, showers are all on. It's all on. Yeah. Sinks, taps are on. Yeah. Shelves to go on still, Crystal, aren't they? Put on. Toilets are on, wrapped. Because what's been happening is, 
<laughs> every single toilet's been getting used on the job and at the end when the cleaners come in to clean it's like cleaning the second hand toilet so this time they're getting wrapped up and there's one toilet on site downstairs that can be used rather than doing them all then does anybody know people who work on site for some reason it's like a known thing that they just ruin the toilets yeah everyone got on toilet i don't get why so is that where the small radiator needs to go that's very interesting so we've ordered all the radiators and me probably my fault not checking on site and probably christine's fault for not telling me until they come i think they haven't worked it's a little bit too small because the boxing in that's been done there for that soil pipe no that's a duct thing because the duct thing as well as well so you've done the soil pipe and the ducting yeah that's so no normally it's not that deep so it's normally higher than we get away with putting the radiator in but there it's not so yeah okay so we'll sort that but yeah other than that it's looking all right isn't it just going around the socket as well a bit just making sure christian speaks to the lads mm. to make sure this time around the sanding and the filling's been done around them nice and neat because as i say once they once it gets lit up they, that's what you see the most all the time with the finish around the sockets and the switches i just noticed one on there that needs looking at these are all being done decent to be fair that one's getting done as well isn't it you know it's scored underneath as well that bit's been missed yeah yeah it's a bit to get on top of that so on that one there you put the you put the fan on the ends there on the edge there yeah yeah that was only v because uh, Aye, so, so what grill are we using on there then with a the cover the square cut no no i'm a round one but we use it no, will, it, will it fit uh-huh. yeah. exactly just for four inch four so inch round looking at if there's a fan that's been cut out there it's never normally on that position and it's been cut with a square rather than a circle so i'm checking that christian's got the right cover yeah so it'll fit 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 that's one there look so i haven't done any math there, look. Mm-hmm. just double check all that mate before it gets done before you wrap it up What's happening with the beads? Uh, I got the handles, I got the beads, but it's uh, saying some rain now, so I just focus more outside at the minute. But as yeah. soon as it's done outside, just focus inside more a bit. Yeah, that will be you going to do this thing and clear that off? Put clear fresh it stuff off on. And fresh, fresh yeah. for Tommy, the plastic man. Yeah, sad. Yeah, we got all the new handles. You need to take that off there as well. It's like a protector that. Been on yeah, there for years. Sound, okay. Looking good, mate. So, yeah, the painting's moving along nice. Everything else is looking good. Bathroom bits are all on. Upstairs now, really, once these paintings are finished. <coughs> um, second fix, sparkings all more or less done, isn't it? they back on Monday now. When's Kev? What's Kev doing? Data Kev? Book to him. Data Kev's just had a baby, by the way, so it's a bit hard to pin him down. It's always hard to pin him down for the day anyway. But all of a sudden now, obviously it's harder because he's just had a fifth baby. Five girls he's got. <laughs> So can we can imagine what his life's like, it's chaos now. Um, so it's hard trying to get him back to get these little last bits done, but it's only them two to do then, isn't it? Both Kev's to come back in, and it's just us. Just the furniture? Furniture's coming, yeah. So then, when it's just us to finish it off, and when I say just us, it's just me, Christian, Christian's lads, and we're not relying on any of the trade to do stuff. It's in our own position, and we know we're going to get it done. We know we're not relying on anyone, so I know I'm relying on Christian to get the job finished in time and we know what pace left but given where we're up to now we should have it done easy shouldn't we you booked the blinds and you booked the carpet in you measure it yeah. booked in already so we're moving good so that's it for today on adelaide got a few more things i need to go and get sorted out now so i'm gonna head off go and get them sorted and then i'll see you tomorrow so today i'm on green bank which is our office or well, to be office but i'm here to look upstairs because the lads are now fully ripped out and I need to check a few little things before we get started. All the timber for the floor, all the top floor is going to come as well this week and we can get on with that. So by next week we should be in. So let's go and have a little look and see how we're getting on. So big difference in here now. This was the room that had the big mountain and stuff that they were all getting the bits outside. The lads are just patching in all the brickwork now so you'll see the chimney breast have come out. This one had already been taken down outside so it was just stopped inside the roof which made it easy for us took it right the way down it's already been taken down in the shop it stopped there so again it's just two floors of breast to take out the lads are now just patching back in the brickwork this bit here what we'll do we'll just then fill it with another layer of brick so it's the same thickness and same um, all the way across upstairs there it stopped so you'll see the step the brick steps back so this skin well, it's a triple skin, double skin, or what? I don't know. Comes up, and as soon as it's that floor, it's up back in. So up there, 
that are just patching in now, which is nice and easy. Then they'll come down here and, and lay another course of brick. When this floor comes out, after we put the loft floor in, which as I say, the timber's coming this week, the lads will probably start it next week now, I think. Get the floor in, the way to drop this and all that out in one go. So this is this is a nice big room, this. This is gonna be, this was the living room and it's gonna stay as the living room, but albeit a little bit smaller, we're gonna pull, once that wall goes down and this floor is gone, it's not needed. We're gonna pull that wall further forward. The stairs as well are gonna be a bit further in, so this room will be a little bit smaller. It'll still be the same layout, probably couch there, telly there, but the actual floor itself is solid. So this is staying in, not touching that, but it's gonna patch in there where the breasts have come out. That's where obviously they were. This already add in brackets, but it had been taken out. The breasts have been taken out in the room above. This breast had stayed in, so we're gonna take this out, take away this base, where it was holding up the existing breast and then do away with the floor and then there'll be two new floors going in loft will be the first one which we'll have a look at now so yeah what, so what, what did you tell me to look at when i come top floor top 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 floor yeah As the stairs it goes up and yeah the, the window front of the stairs yeah it's that high isn't it that's that high basically yeah and if we, we set up the next floor mm. I think the best way if we swap it before the linter. Yeah, it's gonna have to come out. Oh yeah, you wanna swap it beforehand so you can get a fix in. Yeah, before, yeah, before the perimeter uh -huh, system. Okay, yeah. sounds good. Because we need to step back, you know, we need to step back for the door more a bit, I think, no? Yeah, 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 it's, yeah. Got, it's gotta be set back anyway, yeah, but we, um, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying there. Okay, so you wanna do it before the floor yes. goes in? Yes, before the floor goes in. Why is it easy for you? Yeah, more easy, because uh, outside, it's a facing brick, mm. so I'm not really able to damage the facing brick, but inside is minimum. Yeah. Uh, we need minimum the thing. Okay, the, the, right. linters, the concrete linters. Yeah, well, we'll, yeah. Uh, we have to, you'll have to meet me and we'll measure it properly then. Yeah, okay. Right, so okay. No worries. See you okay, in a bit. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, so Christine was just asking me when I come here to check that one of the windows at the back is slightly higher, clitting right up to the eaves of the roof, and because we are dropping the floors, and it's going to be fixed in all the way around and on that side there's going to be the face of our dormer where we'll need extra support anyway for the face which is going to be getting step back you know it's like we probably we step out you've got to do 200 mil we do ours a little bit just a little bit more step back um he's asking if we can take the window out first do the lintels for both of the windows get, and obviously put the new brickwork in so that before we put the wall plate on for the timber floor which is right so i'm looking at it now it needs to be done that way so we need to measure the floor first now before that gets in. Normally what I do is I just meet the joiners on site, measure the floor heights together when they start so we know where we're all working to, put the datum line in. But on this time, we'll have to measure for the lintels first, let Christine get that done with the lads, and then put the floor in. So he's going to come back later today and meet me. I like how it's like this now. It's all like spacious. So you can remember up here, this had three bedrooms, one over there with the cameras, hallway, bed, another bed here, bed there. So in this space, this whole space, we need to work out how we're gonna get five bedrooms with five en suites. So the loft, as I say, is the easy bit. There's gonna be a dormer on the back. So it'll be two bedrooms, two bathrooms. The hard part is this floor space is getting three bedrooms with three en suites. Now the easy way of doing it is just about three bedrooms and one bathroom, because the bedrooms will be much larger. Or we can know we can definitely get three bedrooms and two bathrooms. So whether we do one bedroom with an ensuite and two bedrooms with the Jack and Jill style bathroom, saying what I did on the first ever HMO that I did. But I don't like doing that. I want to try and make sure if I can get it done with the ensuite. But for now, rather than rack my brain with it, I've been messing around with plans. We're just gonna get the floor in which as I say the tin was coming for, so the loft floor will be positioned in just above these windows, probably be about there, which will go right the way around the whole room. The stairwell opening will be in this section here with our trimmers there. And then once that's in, then we take this floor out. You'll see sometimes people do HMOs and ripouts like this, they'll take the whole floor out and build from the ground up. We do it a little bit different, we do it rip it out to this stage, we'll leave this floor in as a platform to work from, put the loft floor in first, then take this floor out, build the next floor and work down that way. Just because it keeps the integrity of the building, 
together that little bit better and I can sleep better at night because there's been moments where we used to rip the hole the inside out and then build from the ground up and it'd be windy storms happen and I'd be lying there in bed thinking mate that house is going to fall down so rather than put myself through even though the weather's good at the minute I, my arm's not doing it so to make it safe and easy for the lads to work off we always have this platform and then literally they'll be working at this height off, off platforms and then a new floor will be put in that chimney there where the existing stuff has gone on as I said we're probably going to lift that up higher doesn't have to be that low so we'll keep the existing brackets scallow brackets they are for people who don't know we'll keep the existing ones but put them in higher and take them up once the floor's in so we know what's going on um, we may even have a conversation with next door so if you want to take it out because in this area you can maybe just take the whole thing out but as I say we'll do that after the floor's in but yeah floor will go in then this floor will go down next floor in and then I'm going to jig out what's going to happen with the bathrooms but as you can see the lads are just working on patching all the brickwork that's needed all the windows are going to get swapped for new windows on the back swapped for new and that's like dormer on the front this whole roof's going to come off as you can see there's no felt or no membrane so it'll be all coming off and replaced but yeah it's mad looking at like, like this how big it is this would be nice to be kept nice and big but you'd only have one bedroom and as i say the difficulty is normally so when you normally do because this is a mixed use in the shops below and then we've got the first floor which is our ground floor for the hmo going into the outrigger normally when you get to this floor which is your middle floor you normally have an outrigger again so if you do have an outrigger again it allows you to have the extra space for the bedroom where there's only yeah we've only got this space to work with to get three bedrooms and three on suites which is tight so i'm gonna have another mess around on the plans and see what we can do but as i say for now just to keep the job moving is just get the we'll get the floor and i know where the open is going to be for the stairs because that can only change so much but i'm hoping it'll allow me to have an ensuite somewhere here for this room bedroom will be there and then the ensuite will be there for that one and there for that one going into the middle so if i can get it to work like that that's sound if not we'll have to do some sort of jack and jill style thing here <coughs> but again don't know how that's gonna work so yeah fun and games more or less ripped out now the ladder's just taking out the rest of the ceiling so you can see it's like a nice little vault on the ceiling there again there was gallow brackets on a chimney there that's already been removed outside so i think the gallow brackets must have been done first they took the breast out and then over the years they then took the chimney out outside because next door was doing work so we left a small breast in sitting on gallow brackets for nothing so the lads have removed that now steel's gone they've just got the brackets to come down we'll probably keep them because we use them on other jobs to come in and they're not like decent ones but the nice vaulted ceiling so i'm in two minds what to do whether to take it higher the ceiling so we've took all these out for now but we might just take it higher to the pair and give it a bit of a vault maybe not all the way up maybe give us ourselves a flat ceiling where that small pearling is there but just to give us that bit of a more dynamic feel to the room make it feel a little bit bigger but as I say, this is going to be our kitchen. It was the existing kitchen, which was to that wall. That was the existing bathroom. But this is going to be one big kitchen dining type area. The kitchen probably just wrap around, sink and stuff here. All the waste going out. And maybe a bit of a seating area there. Or I might do what we usually do, which is our little concrete desk. Well, uh, breakfast bar table coming out with chairs. Or maybe that side. Don't know yet. Need to design a little bit of layout on it. The difficulty is sometimes for us because we're so used to doing the other houses in Waverley and in Kensington. It's dead easy what we do, like the same sort of process each time. When you come to a property that's a little bit different in shape, you'd have to like not think outside the box but think differently than you used to. Still incorporate ideas that you've used on other jobs, but try and make it work with the size you've got. And as I say, I'm all about making the space work properly. So I need to make sure it works right first time round for us. So I've got a couple of ideas to come up with. Just need to draw it out on the software that I use, the floor planner, to make it work usability wise. And then go from there. But the lads are cracking on nice, just a few little bits. I'm gonna take them timbers out there. I can see outside. They're ready for another skip. So I think Christian's already ordered that. Dust in my eye. And and yeah, and then downstairs into the hallway is staying as it is, the existing the existing walls are staying in. But we'll just have our M and E all down there as well so we'll have the, the gas meters and stuff and all that there with it already is in the housing just update the box and stuff the last side toilet so yeah that's it on its way you can see the flies flying around it not the best don't even know if it works so yeah so that's it for today on this project 
tomorrow I am heading over to Project Albert. So we'll see how we get on there. Hello, I'm back. So first and foremost, I owe you an apology for not putting out an episode on Wednesday. So what's happened is I went away on another holiday. I'll probably get some grief for that because I know I am getting in here. Basically, Rachel, my wife, is obsessed with holidays. We didn't go on holiday for like three years when we were renovating our house and she's made up for it now. But this is like literally like the fourth, fifth time this year we've been away. But I was still going to put an episode out. I checked we had Wi-Fi at the hotel, etc., etc. However, what I wasn't expecting was to get struck down with food poisoning, which was lovely in 38 degrees heat, basically wiped me out. And to be honest with you, so I was gonna do a bit of an episode there, I don't know what I was gonna do, me and Alex were gonna do something together, but we were gonna put an episode out. However, I just literally couldn't get my head off the pillow and it was just minging, felt awful. And as it turned out, the Wi-Fi was absolutely donut there, so it wouldn't have been great anyway, it would have caused me a load of stress. So I just thought, you know what, even though I would want to stay consistent and yeah, the algorithm's important, etc. I just have to, YouTube's great and I love all you guys and I, I love putting the content out there. I just couldn't do it and I thought I've just got to get myself better. I'm feeling better today and I'm feeling like I am ready for war. However, both my kids have now got food poisoning. We've been up all night. It's, it's tough, but we're back. And I really appreciate you guys coming back and watching today because I feel like maybe I let you down. It actually really weighed heavy on my mind whilst I was away because I want to be consistent and I don't want to be, I want, I want, I, I feel a level of responsibility to you guys. Quite a few people have messaged me on social media saying, oh, really gutted that we, uh, that you didn't put an episode out. And that, honestly, that means, means a lot. And I take this responsibility um, seriously. So yeah, but we're back now. And um, thanks very much for Alex for holding the fort. <sighs> I don't know what I'm against this week. I'm just going to get myself, well, the end of this week, I'm just going to get myself in my office, log on, see what's what, and attack the day. Yeah, are you rolling? Yeah, oh. rolling. Oh, you got your guns out? Yeah. All right, sound. So yeah, let's catch up with KTM now. Obviously, everything has been well, and TB. TB is actually behind the camera because Hollywood is on holiday this week. So that makes it even more... In Get your phone away. That makes it even more difficult. So I'm actually going to have to edit the back end of this video somehow. I'm not edited for years, but I'll sort it. So okay. how's things been, brother? It's been mint, yeah. Been it's been actually much better when right, you're not here. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. We, we have a ball, don't we? We've been playing footy in here. No, it's been productive. We've smashed it, haven't we? we me and Thomas and Danny have been... Across everything, obviously. Yes, Jay I should have mentioned. Here. Yeah, because Jay was away so, with yeah, me. No, he didn't get food poisoning. No, we've had no one on the front line, so we've covered that between us, which has been fun. Um, the grab side's been flying. We've got loads of deliveries out this week, just gone. Yeah, that's um, good. And mm. everything seems to be in good shape. On yeah. the site. Thomas behind the camera has been grafting, looking mm. after. Crumble, yeah, sites. yeah, yeah, um, crumble, yeah, crumble, yeah. But we've got to um, make sure we give TB credit as well because yes. he gets pretty upset, doesn't he? Yeah, he's, like, he's, yeah, he's more, he's more like mad on it last week. He was because swinging at us in the pub. Yeah, he was, wasn't he? Yeah, but no, everything has been good. And yeah. I tell you what, has, is good. I've checked in with Dale. He's yeah. flying. We've had a really uh, different type of job this week. We've had a full repair on a van, which again, it's almost like we're doing body work as well. It's mad. His role is just sort of developed on it but he, he uh role is anymore i don't think no i don't but he i think do he, I. Li he likes it that way anyway but yeah. yeah he's been looking after uh a customer's van which has had a bit of a mad impact apparently he was driving down the motorway and the axle come off yeah. is that right and that yeah. of a vehicle in front and, he, and he, he ran over it and it smashed the front part of his uh van he's lucky that he uh, he didn't get hurt wasn't he? he said it was like final destination yeah. like bouncing towards him he was like yeah so but yeah let's have a look at that Hi right, guys, so back in now. Probably not seeing me for a while now on the episodes, but uh, it's been away and I've been ill. Uh, but back in now. Um, first job for me on a Monday is the Renault traffic that uh, was actually going down the motorway and a prop shaft off a wagon went under the front end of another vehicle, um, smashed their sump. Uh, making all the oil literally cover this van and that prop shaft's gone straight through the radiator of this van um, so it needs a bumper uh, two radiators splitter yeah it's uh, not in a good way so I'm just getting 
it cleaned off now. Um, it's covered in oil from the car that was in front. Um, so luckily it's not done any oil damage or sump damage to this, uh, which you know could have been catastrophic. You know, would have starved the engine of oil, seized it up potentially, but uh, they were lucky it was just the radiators. So gonna pull that back together, pull, pull it apart, get it back together and yeah, get this sorted. Uh, it might need uh, uh, the, the bumper taken uh, to get painted, but uh, we should get it sorted, get it washed now and uh, get it in and stripped. So the plan here, gonna have to get this bumper off. Um, probably all the grill, maybe the lights because there's some, I'm guessing there'll be some brackets behind here uh, that I need to get to and down here. Um, and then I'm gonna have to get under here. Well, once all this front ends off, I'll be able to get both these radiators off uh, and replace them with the new, which is all in the back of my van. So uh, let's get going. So it's stripped, the radiator is knackered. <laughs> uh, as you can see, I'll show you a, a bit closer up in a minute. Um, Renault has sent me the wrong parts. I've got the main radiator, which is fine, but it actually has another one in front of it, which is a bit smaller. Um, but they've actually sent me an intercooler, which is not what I asked for, but hey ho. Uh, so that's gonna hold me back now till Wednesday. Uh, I'm completely rebuilding this, but I've just got to swap some bits on the bumper. I'll get that sorted and then I'll just have to wait for parts again. Uh, it's such a pain in the arse. You'd think with these being brand new, it, you know, and you're putting the reg in, you should just fire up the right stuff straight away. But um, unfortunately, you have to just get part numbers and give them the part numbers and then you, you can't really go wrong then. But it's what it is. You try and order your parts before... Uh, you get stuck into the job, so they come in time, you know, and you can get the job done quicker, but sometimes it just messes you up in the long run, so uh, crack on with something else. So my part has turned up. Uh, it, well, I'm hoping it's the right part anyway. Um, it's the secondary radiator for this. Uh, I have already put the other radiator on, so this is the large main radiator, um, and that is the secondary I'm guessing it does the cooling fill out like the oil and the, and the turbo and stuff like that. So uh, it doesn't need to be so much bigger. Um, so yeah, I'll get that on and hopefully see this back up and running and finished today. So uh, let's go. Renault's done. Uh, it's had a new, two new radiators, new bumper. I've actually saved him a little bit of money. Um, the painted section of the bumper, um, I have managed to take off the old one and put onto the new one. So saved him a little money there. Um, it's had a new wheel on the back because that got damaged as well. Um, but we have no wheel trim, which is a shame. But I'm sure you can sort that out. I don't fancy getting genuine Renault ones because it costs a fortune um, but yeah it's looking mint now brand new again so it's perfect you know every day is different with every trade and it's great great stuff I'm here there and everywhere it keeps me so busy um, also got this that needs sorting I have obviously uh, well I have done some adjustments to the back end to uh, take away some of that uh, angle so it can allow the cars to get on without scraping 
um, I need to put some fixing down eyes on it uh, and we're going to get some ramps uh, some 13 foot ramps so I think they're good for about five six ton uh, which is good for the plant and the vehicles so yeah buzzing I can't wait to get stuck into this and it's gonna have some beacons put on it and you know just a bit of a heavy trade uh, look about it get some uh, stickers put on it and stuff so yeah uh, looking forward to that um, but I'm gonna head over now to Audershaw and try and get some stuff uh, finished off over there so catch you in a bit come through TB I am struggling today smashing the water out getting stronger by the minute back in Liverpool it's a very Liverpool based episode this week but Alex is going to show you Project Albert getting wrapped up and the final showcase we do this every time Alex will probably tell you this but we do this because we want it for marketing reasons it's really useful to send to uh, potential tenants but also to show investors about the level of product we like to put out there we feel like we're doing some of the best work out there when it comes to high-end student property so yeah you be the judge of that back to you mr Lidich. Mm. so welcome back to liverpool i'm on project albert and you remember i said i weren't going to show you it again in here which i'm not uh, the tenants are inside and they're all moved in happy as larry last week or the week before now i think it was uh, niall was inside getting our finishing show reel so as i say every time we finish a property we'll get the video and photos done professionally and then we use that every year then for our marketing tool so when we advertise the property again for next year we use them photos we use the videos for the walkthrough and stuff like that and it's also good to show on social media so i hope you like what we've done just think there was a lot of blood sweat and tears gone into these properties and then that final piece what you're going about to see is everything coming together in one so have a look So I hope you liked that video there. So I'll just think overall in weeks you've been watching us build that project out from when we first started on YouTube really. We were sort of already into that project and we brought it to the channel, I think it's like episode five or something. You've seen the full transition right through to the end and now you've just seen the finished shot of it. And we all like doing it and I like doing them as well. Like seeing a project come to an end and then seeing it showcased on a, on a bit of footage like that, putting all the dressings in there and showing what it looks like when it's fully finished, ready to be tenanted. As I say, the tenants are in there now, so they they were made up with it. So they've put their faith in us to build that out because when they done the viewing on there, just think about this, they done a viewing on one of our other properties last October to rent one off us. So we showed them one round the corner, which is very similar to that, albeit different colours and different styles, but similar sort of layouts and standard. Dave then sent sound, yeah, we'll go with you, it's going to be a brand new property. We pointed out where it was going to be, took them round, showed them the outside, but at the time, we, we, we weren't even starting on site. It only started by Christmas. So Dave took their faith in us to get that finished, and then for them to see it for the first time, something that we should have really filmed, just showing their reactions. But they seen it when he walked in, he couldn't believe it, because it's probably one of, one of the best houses that they've stayed in. Really, it's a brand new house, like getting a brand new car. Everyone knows that feeling when you get a brand new car for the first time, get the keys. It's the exact same feeling. You're the first person who's staying in that property. So, um, yeah, they were made up. But just to give you some headline figures there as well, so we're getting 155 per week per person on that room, which is like 48 grand gross for the whole year. We'll net profits after we pay bills, finance, and we pay our own lettings company. 
and Belen's and management fee to manage that because we just basically do enough to cover our overheads there. We'll net about 23k, 24k profit a year off that one property, so it'll be decent. We haven't had the valuation done yet, they're booked in for two weeks from now, so we'll let you know what we do get in terms of evaluation on there. But we've asked for 360k, so we'll see what comes back. We get 360, we're happy with that. We got a 350k GDV val done when we first took it on, and we got a, a loan put on the property for the development. So we've already had it done at 350, so we've asked for 360, which we should think we will clear that easy. And you know, with the money that we pull out of it, we're happy with leaving what we're leaving in. Uh, so, yeah, so another one on the books, another one in the portfolio, and another one that's going to earn us rent for the rest of our time we keep it so back over to manchester jeez danny's on the camera god i can't wait for hollywood to be back he's apparently he's back on friday but on wednesday i'm gonna have to take the lead somehow and i'll film it a bit d and j project style probably and a bit dane's low style as well i'll film myself but i promise i'll deliver up more value i'm a bit drained today i've struggled a little bit with getting over this little bit of a bug that i had but Hopefully you still enjoyed the episode, and hopefully, gee, don't worry about that, it was only three grand. Hopefully you will come back on Wednesday, because we really appreciate your views, and we also really appreciate you liking and subscribing. So if you've liked what we've managed to push together this week, please click the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you for watching another episode of Every Trade Behind the Build. See you on Wednesday. Woo!